Hello, my name is Maureen Borland, and I've been invited here to this wonderful place, the John McGivney Center, to speak of how our family became acquainted with this place. And it all stems with this little boy, our grandson. He was born February 27th, 2016, in London, with a rare genetic disorder, arthrogryposis multiplex congenita. Now before I go any farther, I want everybody to know I am not in the medical field. My pronunciation of these things that's wrong with him is going to be wrong, but he is our little boy. We knew things were going wrong before he was born. He was born to our daughter and um, she was sent to London Hospital. Multiple tests came back and the prognosis was not good. Um, arthrogryposis is a very rare disorder. If it, if it had affected his inner organs, they said he could live 12 hours, he could live 48. But we went forth and on delivery, I was in the delivery room with her, along with about 25 or 30 other people, all the doctors, their teams, plus a pastor. Well, our little Cliffy was born. He looked like a little pretzel. My grandpa, my husband, always calls him his little pretzel. Everything was all twisted up. His little legs were twisted up. His hands were twisted up. But he came out screaming. And if I could speak for him, I would say he was saying, get out of here, I am just fine. I am going home. Four days later, that's exactly what he did. With assurance that London Hospital, Health Science Center, would give our daughter and her husband a call as to what to do next. Well, the next thing came, casting. And because her husband had to go back to work, one week it would be, my hu be Bill, my husband, and the next week it would be me, drive her and this little boy to London to straight, start straightening his legs. While there, they set up an appointment with the John McGivney Center. They said, where you live and where she lives in Windsor, that would be the closest place to go to. So through them, the appointment came, and again, I was with our daughter, Rosemary, when we brought him carrying this little infant in, I think he was about two months old at this point, carrying him in, and the receptionist had this great big grin, welcome to the John McGivney Jet Center. It was, it was a feeling I will never forget. At that point, we met two of the most fabulous women, Louise and Bonnie. They took that little baby laid him on the table and they started massaging him and talking to him in the kindest, sweetest voice. And this became a regular event. Every Monday at three o'clock, now our time went on, our daughter had to go back to work. Her maternity leave was over, so Grandpa and I stepped in full time. Every Monday at three o'clock, we were here with Cliffy. Now in between all this, he had to go back to London. He was not, um, she couldn't nurse him. Her nerves would not allow it. Uh, feeding was not going well. He was throwing up everything and he was declared failure to thrive. After being in London for six weeks, they finally put in a feeding tube and Cliffy was sent home. And Cliffy started to grow. He started to turn around and he became the happy little boy that he is. Like I say, every week though, it was here. We were either coming here or heading to London. That 401 and our truck became very acquainted with each other, taking, taking that little boy down there to the hospital. Here, we met all the kind people. Everyone was so welcoming and friendly. Uh, Louise went out of her way. The minute she found out um, that Cliffy, when he moved into the kid cart, she went to our daughter's home and met my husband there with help. How to get him in the door. Thankfully the doors were wide enough to get the kid cart through. But the little lift, the little ledge on the door, showed my husband what to do. Helped him with a change table. Our daughter had an ordinary change table. Showed him how to make it a change table that would be convenient for Cliff. I was having trouble 
getting clothes on her little grandson. Because his arms are twisted, and I didn't want to hurt him, he's, he's so frail with uh, his muscles, and I happened to mention it one Monday when we were here, and I don't know if it was Bonnie or Louise says, oh, Maureen, start with the good, end with the bad, and reverse it when you're taking the clothes off. Thank you immensely. After that, I wasn't sweating so bad every time I had to dress him or whatever we were doing with him. Cliffy prospered. We, have, we call the words Cliffy's world. He loves to sit outside. He loves to look around and at his neighbors, at the people that he loves. He can't talk. He never will. After multiple operations, um, with the high hopes that he would walk, he is not going to. We have accepted it, his mother has accepted it, and we simply go on. We simply take day by day. Again, Louise went to his daycare and helped train them there. She went the extra mile for my family, for my Cliffy. Clifford John, but he's always been Cliffy, and when if you get to know him, you know him as Cliffy. He is bright, he is aware of his surroundings, and once he gets to know you, he will squeal in delight when he sees you. And we saw this every week. When we, Bill and I would come to bring him here for his therapy lessons, when Louise would come down the hall, he would start squealing when he saw her, and he did the same with Bonnie. Through this wonderful place here, we met the speech um, pathologist trying to work with him. We met uh, the person, and I do not remember his name, the kind person that helped to adjust his kid cart. And when he got big enough for the uh, wheelchair, helped fit him with that. Help my daughter and us go to the resources that was necessary, right down to the bags for the feeding tube. This, as I said, we are not in the medical field. We did not know where to go. We were in, we were drowning in the lake until we met the kind people that work here. When it become time for Cliffy to go to school, the winter before, Louise says, I'm going to have him evaluated. We want to keep him here if we can at all. He was evaluated and accepted here. Before he came, um, our daughter said to his mom, they're having an open house, but she says, I have to work. Will you go? Well, Bill and I jumped at the chance. We came and the children that we met made a lasting impression on us. One little boy in particular was working on his uh, speaking machine. There's a proper word for it. I don't have it. And Bill stopped to him. He says, hi, my name is Bill. And he typed in, my name is, we'll call it Dave. That made a lasting impression on us. We went home and said to Rosemary, Cliffy's going to the right place. So we met all these new people, his personal support workers, the nurses, um, the, the, the teachers, everybody. The kindness overwhelmed us. The kindness that we met of the people here, they are special. This place is special. Last year, at the end of the year, unbeknownst to our daughter, Cliffy came home with a, um, a scrapbook. And I have it with me today. Those teachers, every month, took pictures of their students. What they were doing. You'll see in the fall, they're outside. They take the extra time to deal with them. Christmas time. The kid, what they do with these children to make their lives as normal as they can be. The month of February, his birthday month, there's a picture of him with a little crown on his head. It's amazing. Last year, uh, they, after COVID, was, they were beginning to come out of COVID, the children were, were taken to the Miracle Diamond Field here in Windsor. What a sight to see. All these buses come in and all these children coming off them to give them a day of kind of normal that the rest of the kids rest of our children. As I said, I have six other grandchildren. Very normal, living normal lives. But there's Cliffy.
he's living the normal life, but he can't. And these teachers here are helping. The teacher signed the back of this book when he went home. And I'd like to read a little bit of what they wrote. I apologize in advance because it does get to me. Cliffy, your smile and laughter bring us so much joy. Have a wonderful summer. Another one, thanks for a fun year. Have an amazing summer. And another, keep bringing your sweet, silly self, Cliffy. The world needs your love and laughter. Have a fun summer. And I'm gonna end with these children here. People will say, oh, they have disabilities. Yes, they do. But they're God's angels on earth. I fully believe this. And this place are the wings, the angels' wings helping these children. Cliffy, it's time to say goodbye today. Our time together is done. We sang, we danced, we learned so much. Remember all the fun. We send you on to learn some more. There's more to learn, it's true. You'll always be a part of us. We'll be a part of you. We saw the smile grow on your face when you discovered something new. We watched as your sparkling eyes lit up. Our eyes glisten too. We know you have hard work ahead with challenges all new. All that we've learned together this year will support you through and through. We send you on to learn some more. There's more to learn, it's true. You'll always be a part of us. We'll be a part of you. We wish you well, we'll cherish you. And as you leave out the door today, know for certain wherever you go, you're in our hearts to stay. Well, however long Cliff spends here, whatever the future brings, my family, we will never forget the experiences here at the John McGivney Center. Thank you for listening.